Both top seeds in action on this Saturday. We start with the Chiefs hosting the Jags at Arrowhead 430 p.m. Eastern. The nightcap takes us to Philly, an NFC East battle between the Giants and the Eagles. All right, time to get to the good stuff on a Saturday with CBS Sports senior writer Pete Prisco and former longtime NFL QB Danny Cannell. Pete, we're starting with you. Chiefs are the betting favorites to win the Super Bowl entering the divisional weekend. Not a lot of chatter about Andy Reid's squad this week. No drama detected. Are they your favorite to win it all? Well, no, they're not my favorite to win it all because I think Buffalo's the best team, but uh, this is a, a good start for them. And, and the reason I say that is because I, I, when you look at Jacksonville, they're the young team trying to do something, trying to, you know, create some magic moments. And are they good enough to create those magic moments? I think that's, that's the question here. Uh, Kansas City's been there, done it. We know how good they are. We know how good Patrick Mahomes is. So this is a real challenge for a young Jacksonville team. And when you look at them, uh, there are a lot of questions about them. And if you try and stop Patrick Mahomes, the matchup to watch, Jacksonville's defensive front against that offensive line. The last time they played, and I went back and watched this tape, they did not get a lot of pressure on him. There were problems with rushing the passer. Since then, Josh Allen has emerged as a big-time threat rushing the passer. He's back to his old form. Trayvon Walker, it's a big moment for him. First overall pick, only three and a half sacks. He has to come up big in this game. They had no sacks last time. They have to get at least three or four in this game to have a chance to win it. Outstanding inside, Pete. I feel like you might just done the whole segment right there in one answer. But I'll, I'll try to stay on the script, Russ, and go just as Kansas City as the favorite. Um, Pete's right. They're a favorite for a reason. I'm on the Bills, too. But a lot of that was based on them having won in Kansas City before and winning home field throughout. And now that they don't have it, it does make me wonder if possibly I'd go back to Kansas City. But I'll stick with Buffalo. It does feel like they're the team of destiny. But I look at the Chiefs, you know, who did lose at home to Buffalo and they lost on the road to Cincinnati, two really good teams in the AFC. I feel like this is why they're the version of the NFL's Golden State Warriors. Like they're just, the Golden State Warriors, when they were in their run, going through championship after championship in the regular season they just wanted to position themselves if they lost it was no big deal and i feel like that's where kansas city is they're kind of tweaking things they're trying out different formations different you know personnel trying to get you know without tyree killer in the season trying to figure out which wide receiver was going to step up jockeying the roster trading you know making the move for Kadarius tony so i i still think this team should be the favorite because they have patrick mahomes while everybody's been looking all season long for the next you know, the next big thing, Patrick Mahomes is running people all year long. I am the big thing, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, Danny, kind of feels like the Jags are playing with house money right now when they take on the Chiefs. They basically won a playoff game. Not basically. They basically, no. They basically won a playoff game just to get into the playoffs. Needed one of the biggest comebacks in playoff history just to get here. They're also on a roll, and they kind of have that feeling like they don't feel like they can lose games at this point. What's your expectation for Trevor Lawrence and the Jags today? Uh, every time we've seen the Chiefs in a big matchup versus other quarterbacks, both sides have stepped up, whether it's Patrick Mahomes versus Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes versus Joe Burrow. That's what the greats do. And I would expect more of the same from Trevor Lawrence. I think he'll step up and play just like he did in the second half against the Chargers and really the way he's played in the second half of this entire NFL season. It feels like he's kind of figured things out and he's finally has a coach and a staff who has put him in a position to succeed. Like once he's been removed out of the debacle that was the Urban Meyer tenure, like all of a sudden we're starting to see a young quarterback come into his own. And it also helps to get a lot more weapons. Christian Kirk comes in. You got Travis Etienne healthy this year. So I think a lot of those reasons are why I think Trevor Lawrence will be able to go toe to toe with Patrick War uh, with Patrick Mahomes. The big question is, well, can he go toe to toe with him and get the win? That to me is a much different question. But I think Trevor Lawrence will play really well today, just like he has the back end of the season. Quarterbacks have their moments. Uh, during the regular season, Trevor Lawrence had his moment against Baltimore when he rallied him to win that game. Then you have your postseason moment. He had his first postseason moment last week 
sh you know, shrugging off four interceptions, which I don't think a lot of quarterbacks can do to win the game uh, and play outstanding football in the second half. Now he has to prove that he can carry that over, and I think he can. I think this is a great opportunity for Trevor Lawrence in the passing game. The Chiefs are not that great on defense. Chris Jones, you block him, you beat him. That's my, my philosophy if I play the Chiefs. I don't think anybody else is really going to be a game record. Chris Jones can be a game record. So if Jacksonville can block him, I think they can have success throwing the football. In fact, I think they will has success throwing the football against this Chiefs defense. Remember, the Chiefs secondary isn't great. There's a lot of young kids back there. Two rookies uh, play a bunch in that secondary. Three actually play a bunch in that secondary. So I think there's a chance to hit some shots down the field. And I can reference a game 1996. Okay, I'm going to go way back. Jacksonville, same type of run. Run won five of the last games to get in the postseason. Went to Buffalo, fell behind, and beat the Bills. Went to Denver as 16-point underdogs against the Broncos team that everybody penciled into the Super Bowl and beat the Broncos because they played loose, they played free, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. Like Danny said, this is house money. Yeah, the old, the old Mark Brunel Jags from back in 96. I like that little callback there. All right, let's dig down a little bit. Pete, you gave us a little sneak peek of your matchup to watch just a little bit earlier. So, Danny, I'm coming to you. When we're talking about matchups that could decide this game, where do you look? So I'm going with Travis Etienne against the front, the defensive front of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, he's got to have a bigger game than he did the last time these two teams faced each other in the regular season. He only had 11 attempts for 45 yards. He did have three catches for another 28, but I think he's got to be over at least 100 yards uh, in total of receiving and rushing, but more so on the rushing aspect. I do feel like uh, Jacksonville's not going to be able to stop Kansas City's offense. But I do think one thing that has at least given teams a chance is to keep it away from them and also to give your defense a rest. So if Travis Etienne can get going, if they can establish the run game, it'll open the play action pass. It gives you better pass protection. To me, a lot of the outcome of this game will focus on Travis Etienne. Like Pete said, I think they're going to be able to throw it on Kansas City's defense. But I think they have to make sure they don't get into a sh like a a throwing shootout where all of a sudden Patrick Mahomes has 50 attempts and Trevor Lawrence has 50 attempts. You want to try to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field, and the best way to do that is get Travis Etienne going. Yeah, I mentioned my matchup earlier because I jumped the gun like a moron, but uh, I'm going to go back to it. And I mentioned the outside pass rushers. I want to talk about Roy Roberts and Harris on the inside because you have to pressure inside as well. And Roy Roberts and Harris has been outstanding the last month. He was dominant last week. So keep an eye on that inside pressure as well. One other note, last time they played the Chiefs, Darius Williams was an out was a nickel corner. That's not what he does. They finally moved him back outside, and since he's been back outside, I think his coverage has been outstanding along with Tyson Campbell. If you can cover, you can get pressure. So that's where that pressure up front has to be helped by the coverage on the back end. All right, good stuff right there. Let's start helping the folks out there win some money on this game. We're talking player props now. Danny, what stands out to you as a really good bet here? So I'm going to look at Trevor Lawrence. We've talked a lot about him. We talked about how he's going to throw the ball. I want to talk about how he's going to rush uh, and run the football. His rushing total is only 16 and a half yards. And I'm going to go over that all day long for a couple of reasons. One, he is deceptively fast. Got really long strides. He's, he's a big play capability all over the place, no matter when he's got the ball. But I also think it comes down to philosophy, right? And when I was a rookie quarterback, Steve DeBerg was my quarterback coach. And he sat me down and he said, there are three different speeds in the NFL and three different game plans. There's the preseason, which is generic. Guys pace themselves. There's the regular season, which is the meat of the schedule. Good speed, good game plans. And you kind of preserve your body for the marathon. And then there's the postseason speed and game plan. And for me, quarterbacks throughout the regular season, you want to protect yourself. You want to slide. You don't want to take a sack. You might throw it away. In the postseason, all that's off the table. You are clawing for every single yard you can get. If you have to run it more, you've got to run it more. And I think Doug Peterson might even call some design runs for Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to go over Trevor Lawrence, 16 and a half rush yards. I'm going to go over Christian Kirk, 62 and a half receiving yards. And in going back and watching the tape from when they met earlier in the season, one thing that stood out, Christian Kirk destroyed Legereus Sneed. He could not match up with him in man-to-man -man situations. And I think the Chiefs are willing to play a lot of man coverage against this Jacksonville team. And, and Christian Kirk destroyed him. He had nine catches for over 100 yards 
and two touchdowns. Watch for the slot fade. They run it a lot, and it's a good play for Christian Kirk. I think he's going to have a big day, over 100 yards, so go over 62 and a half receiving yards. All right, here we go. It is time for Papa John's winning ingredients. It is time to pick this game. The Jags are getting nine and a half at Arrowhead. The total is 53. Pete, you're up first. Chiefs and Jags, what's the pick? I think Jacksonville is going to hang around in this game because they are playing with house money. They're going to play free and loose. They won't win it. Kansas City will win it, but it's going to be tight. I'll take Jacksonville in the points, but I really love the over. I think this thing soars over the total, so I'll take uh, both Jacksonville and the over in this game. I like them both. I love Jacksonville here, Pete. We've talked a lot about the reasons, playing with house money, coming in loose, building on the momentum of the second half last week. The only thing I might say is wait till 430. This thing has been flying away and away towards the Chiefs. I mean, it was at eight and a half, then nine, now nine and a half. See if you can get it at 10, which would give you, I think, some like push protection because maybe you get a 10 point win at the worst case for the Chiefs. I love Jacksonville here playing as the dog. I think they might be chasing a lot of the game, you know, go down early. But I do think they'll have some success scoring against Kansas City's defense. So give me Jacksonville all day long in that nine and a half. All right, Danny Cannell, Pete Prisco, thank you so much for the knowledge and the picks. Let's recap those picks on the prop side of things. Pete likes Christian Kirk to go over 62 and a half uh, receiving yards. Danny thinks uh, Trevor Lawrence will pick up the over and 16 and a half yards on the ground as far as the game goes they both like the Jags to cover the nine and a half P likes the over thanks for seeing points on points here do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game the highlights the picks the instant analysis no yelling no fake debates no politics hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment